Good morning. Good morning. Hope we all, everybody had a wonderful, wonderful Easter and resurrection, uh, res resurrection Day. Hope you had a great time yesterday. Uh, good morning again. We will call this work session to order. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, public comment. Uh, do we have any yes, public comment? We two individuals. Okay, we have two individuals this morning. We have uh, Ms. Don Leonard and Mr. Larry Pierce. Uh, public comment allows the board of... Uh, allows the board the opportunity to listen to the public. Uh, thank you for participating in the county government and uh, we respect our citizens' right to address their government in this meeting. However, I uh, intend to enforce the three-minute rule in order for this meeting to run efficiently and effectively. So once you reach three minutes, I'll ask you to wrap it up and uh, allow you to finish your thoughts and then we will uh, finish uh, the three-minute session for you and move on to the next person. Uh, please avoid campaigning or personal attacks against personnel or officials which should be handled in another forum other than a body of, uh, of such as this. First, uh, Ms. Don Ray Leonard, would you please come forward and give us your address and your subject matter is bus system. Mm -hmm. My name is Don Ray Leonard. I live in Creekside Manor Subdivision in District 2. So I spent this past Easter weekend soaking up the glorious God-given weather and reading our new transportation bill, all 77 pages of it. It's a tough read, and I didn't understand a lot of it, but you can be assured that I will. This bill now takes precedence in the governance of transportation in our state and thankfully relieves you of that duty. And along with this bill comes the recommendation that the Metro counties working towards their own transportation systems needs to stop. Stop it now, stop the spending. No more contracts. You voted to spend $50,000 of our money just this past month, wasting it on a branding project that is now dead right out of the chute. This Board of Commissioners and Transportation Committee meeting knew these state transportation bills were in the pipe, but this Board of Commissioners continually votes to waste our taxpayer dollars. And you chose to let this Transportation Committee who yields no power and is only a suggestive committee, repeatedly act without this board's approval. Enter DC PAC. A group of concerned citizens got together and decided to form Douglas County People's Action Committee, committed to holding our elected officials accountable. We feel that this governing body has been conducting themselves in an unethical and non-transparent manner, as evidenced by the recent antics of the Transportation Committee led by Commissioner Robinson. We believe there to be many instances of law unlawful actions, and we intend to expose these actions as we go forward. Laws have been broken, and the perception is deception. Because you see, it's not just about the buses anymore. It's about how this governing body conducts business in this county. The recent Transportation Committee split meeting, recess, reconvene, meeting, hearing, whatever it was, was a debacle, and according to the Sunshine Laws, illegal. Parading people up here to say, I want the buses because, completely missed the mark. <clears throat> Commissioner Mitchell was concerned about the process, not whether or not people wanted the buses. Douglas County Happenings, the Douglas County Sentinel, and some in this body may believe DC PAC to be a nuisance and choose not to assist us in our efforts to get information out to the people. But we promise the people of this county that we will be all over it. Like Commissioner Ann Jones-Guider said, there will be a day of reckoning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll take this matter on the advisement. Next, Mr. Larry Pierce, please come forward. And give us your address, and I believe well, your subject matter what, is I'm, city I'm be careful what I touch up here, because uh -oh. it's hot. Good deal. <laughs> My name's Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. <clears throat> you know, after a year up here and not have any family in Douglasville, mm -hmm. I want y'all to know that I really feel like y'all are my extended family. <laughs> I really enjoyed coming up here. And whether I fuss or not really depends on which way the wind's blowing. And this past weekend, the wind was blowing real good because if you went by every church, everybody comes out of their cubicle on Easter. 
Now, I don't know how it ever got to be about the rabbit, but uh, somewhere along the line, an entrepreneur <coughs> decided he could sell a lot of eggs. Well, we all clean up around the property when it starts to get warm. Well, let me tell you something. I've been cleaning up for about three months on a trailer that I have, and it was about six foot high, and I have a boat winch, you know, men know what that is, and I go across the top, and I put boards across it. When I crank it down, I compress six foot down to four foot. I drive all the way out to the dump, Saturday, three o'clock. And as I'm driving out to the dump, all these lights are flashing at me, coming the other way. And I'm wondering why they flash their lights at me. Well, I turned up into the dump, and I found out why. The gates were locked. And I drive up there, and I said, wait a minute. It's three o'clock. The sign says close on holidays on Sunday. Saturday. Saturday is a holiday? No. So I thought I'd stand there and get some amusement. And as they started coming up, I started doing like this. And I mean, for you ladies that's never been in a bar near the military base, you can hear these people really letting it go. <clears throat> they had their trash, they had their garbage, and one guy came up in a double axle trailer with sides on it with a great big jacuzzi on it. And he pulls up and I said, I know what you're thinking. He said, what's it doing clothes? I said, I don't know. He said, I have a good mind to put this jacuzzi in front of the gate. He said, if I had a rope. I said, I got a rope. I said, you want to pull it off and leave it in the road right there in front of the gate? He said, no. I said, no, I don't think we should either. They just built the new fire station over there and they probably got cameras over here. I stayed there a half an hour and I just want you to know, please don't do that again. I don't care what holiday it is. Men are working to clean up for the relatives coming up on Sunday. And I'm here to tell you, they came all the way down the road. The last question I have is my road. It appears you're at your three minutes, so can you wrap your thought up? It's three can minutes. I finish this one sentence? Yeah, just your thought, okay. yes. My road is Van Sant Road, it's a quarter mile long, and for some reason DOT painted the white lines and the yellow lines, and it ends right at my property, which is right by the nursery. Mm -hmm. And I just got a silly question as to why did it end there? There's no more yellow lines or white lines going all the way to 92. They just <coughs> cut it off right there. Uh, so other than that, I don't have no complaints, and it's uh, been a good weekend, and a fun weekend, and we'll see what else happens. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. We'll take this matter under advisement. Mr. Pierce, next you have, we have the approval of the minutes, commissioners, if you just review the minutes uh, for tomorrow, and we will approve uh, accordingly uh, at our Board of Commissioners meeting tomorrow. Resolution, we have one resolution on today's agenda, and it's tab number four. Resolution authorizing filing a grant application with the Federal Transit Administration for furnishing and equipment for the addition to the Douglas County Multimodal Transportation Center. Director Watson. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, one of the projects that we have in our 2018 budget is to construct a 6,200 square foot addition to the Transportation Center. Um, well, when we get that addition built, we're going to need furnishings and equipment to go in into it. And this application that we're filing with the Federal Transit Administration will give us money to help pay for those furnishings um, and equipment. Uh, we're asking for $240,000 in federal money. It will require a $60,000 local match. This will not impact the 2018 budget because this project is also already in the 2018 budget. budget. Mm -hmm. And this resolution just uh, request uh, authorizes us to file the application. Okay. Any questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Guyton? Yes, Gary, is this uh, the carryover grant that y'all had um, from 2016 or 17? <clears throat> no, ma'am, this this is new money. This this will be this a, is a new <coughs> application. This yes, ma'am. 
Okay, and this is just for the furniture and fixtures Correct. of the expansion. Yes, ma'am. That's all it's the, for. The building. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I yield back. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Thank you, Director. Thank you. Watson. Tab number, well, not the administrator's not here today, so I'm just going to ask if you have any questions or comments or anything to do, uh, contribute to the discussion. So next we have tab number five, authorization for the Douglas <coughs> Circuit, Douglas County Circuit uh, Accountability Courts to apply for a renewal of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council Accountability Court Grant up to the, up to the amount of $675,000 for the 2018 and 2019 grant year and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Mr. Tim Pruitt, good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a continuation of our general operating grant. This is through the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, who was the originator of the funds that let us start the drug court and the mental health court. This is an expansion of the services that we currently offer. So the only impact this would have on the budget is an increase in the grant dollars we receive. Uh, we are asking for a match of $67,000 so that we can apply for this amount. If they give us less, we would need less of a match. So that is a worst case possible scenario. Okay, any questions for Commissioner Guider? Yes, uh, Tim, is this an uh, in-kind match? Uh, <coughs> this is actually date dollars fund. that we this have? This would be money from, this would be dollars from the date fund. From the date fund? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you already have the money. So it will have no impact. We'll have to adjust the budget, but not, uh, raise the budget the only if we needed money it would come out of the day fund i will check and make sure whether we have it yet or not i don't know if that 67 is maintained from last year or not i just didn't check that. <coughs> but that is the kind of match that we would need for this and it would be out of date if we need anything okay so when you did your budget for 2018 you had this already planned the county money that we received it would be separate from this amount I, we do have an existing agreement with the board of commissioners for $67,000 over a multi-year term. Um, that's what I use for our calculations. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? We'll move on to tab number six. Authorization for the Douglas Circuit uh, Accountability uh, Courts to enter into a uh, memorandum of understanding on MOU with HealthQuest for the purpose of providing approved medical assisted treatment and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Mr. Pruitt again. This is the second time we brought this memorandum to the board. This is a more clear revision. We're asking only for date money in this separate from what we already have, uh, but only for naltrexone pills. This would be a daily medication that prevents uh, someone from receiving the benefits of an opioid treatment um, or an illicit opioid off the Street. So this is not the 30-day shot, which is much more costly. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be a daily medication, and we would partner with HealthQuest, who's a local provider already doing medically assisted treatment, for this specific opioid blocker. This is not an opioid. This is not something that you can get high on, and this has no intrinsic street value. What this does is preserves life and allows us to take a very difficult population, mm -hmm. which is the opioid-dependent population and try to get treatment to take effect. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners or comments? Okay. Commissioner Guider? I didn't see that. So. Uh, Tim, uh, the blocker, the uh, the shot, yes, helps people come off of drugs, uh, opiates. Um, you said they're, it's very, very expensive. Are there grants out there for that? Because I hear it's very <coughs> effective. There are grants out there for that, and we have asked for some of that money in the grant on tab number five. I've asked for a small amount from the state for that. We're also looking for federal money to help pay for Vivitrol treatments, which are the 30-day shots. Mm -hmm. But the cost-benefit analysis, the daily pill, is significantly less than the 30-day shot. You have medication management issues that come with daily pills versus a 30-day shot. That's mm -hmm. very obvious. But uh, we will continue to look for funding streams and try to figure out what we can bring to the county for services. Well, uh, how effective is the shot? Uh, you will not get high on opioids with a shot. Mm -hmm. It and will not happen. Doesn't it take the desire 
for the opioid away from you? Or? There are multiple research studies into that specific question, and they're still finding out more data. Uh, speaking with people firsthand, in pure opinions, is, from my knowledge, is that they have decreased cravings because they can no longer get high on that shot. Mm -hmm. uh, that only works for op opioids. Uh, well, that's where most of the danger is from. These the danger days. of fatality is from opioid overdose. Yes, yeah. that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. So the cravings are decreased with the people that I've spoken to under medically assisted treatment. They're still doing research studies to figure out what levels of decreased cravings might exist nationwide. Mm -hmm. But it would be behoove us to apply for as many grants for that shot as possible. Yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe we could get um, Miss uh, Tiffany she's right there. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, she's uh, to really research yeah. this and apply for anything that we can get on this. It saves lives. Tiffany, what did you say you already started? Yeah, we all we already have. Could you go to the work? Could you go to the mic, oh, please? That's no problem. She's right there on it. Good morning, uh, Mr. Pruitt and I. We already have been working with um, our current mm -hmm. external grant writer to come up with some plans for a grant that we plan on applying for in its next cycle to deal with some of these issues. I'm sorry, you said you our current grant External writer. grant writer that we have in place. Who is that? Angie Brewer and Associates. I thought we did away with their contract. Well, with the, explain that to what we We are no longer under contract with Angie Brewer, but they are going to continue to uh, assist us for this year based on the old contract. We had stipulations in it that if they didn't reach a certain level, mm -hmm. that they would work for free. Mm -hmm. Where they're honoring that that commitment, mm -hmm. and this year they're going to work for free and not charge us any monthly fees. Now there will be fees. Even if we get the grant. Even if Do, we get a grant. Doesn't matter if we get a grant or not. They're not going to charge us any monthly fees. There will be fees if they actually have to do uh, write a large application for us. Uh, they will charge. We will pay for that. But there's no monthly fee at all this year for Angie Brewer. Okay. Because they didn't meet their quota. Their quota. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I knew that, but I thought we had done away with them. Too. Again, we canceled the contract. There's not an actual contract in place between us and Angie Brewer. They're giving us their services for free right now to honor the, the, the uh, canceled contract. But we are diligently seeking. Yes. Uh, this uh, drug for the opiate. But what overdose. Angie Brewer has um, um, suggested to the county is that we need to develop our programs. We need to do a lot of in-house work uh, that's necessary in order for us to actually apply for this grant. And that's what Tiffany and Mr. Pruitt uh, will be working on. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate this, sir. Tab, any other questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners? Okay, we'll move on to tab number seven. Authorization for the Douglas uh, Circuit Accountability Courts to renew a memorandum of understanding with the Ascension Counseling and Mental Health Services as the primary uh, treatment provider for the Accountability Courts and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Mr. Court again. Uh, Ascension Counseling has been our primary service provider for probably the last two years now. Uh, they continue to do an excellent amount of work. They have a tremendous amount of rapport with our participants. They do all of our individual therapy, all of our group therapy for our drug court. Um, I highly recommend them. Uh, we have a very good working relationship, so I'm very happy with them at this point. Uh, they are very familiar with the accountability court process um, and have treatment providers in other accountability courts, so this is something that they have a lot of expertise in. Okay. Any comments or questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, me mental health and mental illness is obviously something that uh, we mutually have um, advocated for in the county, both from prevention and intervention. Um, and just in the past couple of cycles, um, budget appropriations, there were funds that, uh, that were dedicated uh, to this cause to help doing that. As we get, as we age, as we season, um, uh, in providing this, and as it comes along, as it relates to grants, there's something about uh, evaluation of services. Um, there's something about um, taking that evidence base and leveraging it to the next level. How how do we evaluate? And I, I said all that for background to say that now we've gotten time to get in there and get a working relationship. But at some point, there's a measurement component. 
How do we measure ascension? And it sounds like you're satisfied, but are there um, statistics that comes out of that, that relationship that we can learn from and, and, and how do we measure the dollars that are awarded from the county, our side, not necessarily that may come from the state, but how do we measure those dollars? Can you give me some insight? Absolutely. So success can be measured in a lot of ways. Uh, one of the easiest ways for me to measure success is the number of completions that we have in our accountability court programs versus other programs nationwide. It's very good to expose someone to treatment, but for them to complete that treatment mm -hmm. is a milestone that's fairly easy to compare from program to program. Nationwide, 48% of people who enter an accountability court no longer complete that accountability court. Locally, we're at about 30%, so we are beating the national mm -hmm. average by a tremendous amount. Uh, that's in no small part due to ascension. You don't have to just deal with uh, my feelings on this because we brought a researcher on staff from Mercer. Uh, this researcher is at no cost to the county. Uh, she is a treatment team member with us. She sits in our staffings and comes to court mm -hmm. and is studying the data that we have collected from drug court since we started. Now she's focusing on drug court in this cycle so that we can have a larger body of data to study. Mental health court is much newer and much smaller. Right. That time will come in the years forward. We will move, shift our focus from researching our drug court once we get those findings, implement successes and try to figure out how we improve that program. And then we'll shift over to mental health court and do the same thing. So evidence-based practices are inherent to accountability courts. Research is inherent to accountability courts so that we can verify and go back not only to the board of commissioners, but also to the state and say, statewide, this is how our program ranks, not only on the number of people we get, not only on the hours of treatment we deliver, but also on the results that those number of people and hours of treatment equal. And that's where real tax savings come across the board for the county and state. Absolutely. Good direction. That's exactly what I was looking for. I look forward to getting some of their research findings. <coughs> We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. MTR, you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pruitt, also, you, you mentioned rankings. Is there an, uh, um, a county, I won't say county, a state registry or national registry that uh, had, you know, that displays those rankings to show that we are working very diligently to uh, make changes. Is there something? Are we listed somewhere? That's my question. There is a list of the accountability courts statewide. It is rudimentary at this point because it basically has population numbers. Okay. So we only at this point know the number of people that we treat. But the dialogue inside of the accountability courts is focused towards results right. and delivering results back to the legislature and providing them with the data that they need to allocate larger dollars to the accountability courts for better results. So those are works in progress. Right now it's easy to say how many people are in treatment. It's a very easy number to deliver. We can do that today. And we can compare that statewide. Um, other than that, it's just my absolute belief that we're the absolute best. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll have the data on that soon. One of your buttons hit me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know the questions from the board. And then I have, last but not least, tab number eight for you, Mr. Pruitt. Authorization for the Douglas Circuit Accountability Courts to enter into a memorandum of understanding with ELAB Solutions for the purpose of testing samples for mind altering substances and genetics and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents, Mr. Pruitt. So the foundation of accountability courts is accountability and the easiest way for us to find accountability in our drug court is to test for illegal mind altering substances. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lab that we use that. It is a private lab. It is here in Georgia. They're actually in Sandy Springs. We've been using them for the last year plus. Uh, they were actually introduced to us by the accountability court council. Uh, there was a grant award back a year and a half ago or so that allowed some grant dollars for us to have specialty testing there. Uh, we were so pleased with their process and with the price that they offered that uh, we switched all of our testing there. It is cheaper for us to use them than any other vendor we had at the time. Um, it was also, once you count in man hours, cheaper for us to use them than to use a lab that sits at the probation office right now. Uh, just because the reagent cost, the chemicals that actually run that lab, and the person to run that lab. Once we got done with those two numbers, uh, it made zero sense for us to continue to do it in-house. It was far cheaper for this commercial size lab to do it. Plus they brought a host of things online that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. Specialty testing, synthetic marijuana, 
uh, other mind-altering substances that are actually perfectly legal to use but uh, do have negative health benefits and do interfere with treatment. Plus pharmacogenetic testing, which is a fairly specific field that literally allows us to take a problem case where mental health compli medication compliance has been an issue and test their specific genome and all mutations in their liver to determine does this medication work good for you or does it not. Uh, it cuts down on the amount of time it takes for us to hone in on a medication regimen that might actually work, mm -hmm. which is groundbreaking. Uh, that has been a very specific tool that we've used on problem cases to very good results. So I'm very happy with eLabs. Obviously, I wouldn't bring it to you if I wasn't. Um, our population has grown, and so therefore we've reached the point where we now need a memorandum of understanding because our number of tests has grown along with our population. I heard you speak about in-house. Um, mm -hmm. You said that's that's the preference. Where is this lab? Is it located? Well, can you tell me? And two and a half years ago, we entered into an agreement with the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. where they had a lab from Siemens Corporation that they placed in their local probation office here in Douglas County. Okay. Uh, that lab was underutilized at the time and uh, I actually met with the commissioner of the Department of Corrections and he agreed to allow us to place a person to run that lab and we'd be able to use that lab at their pricing, their reagent levels. So we entered under a state contract pricing scheme that was very beneficial to us at the time. Our population was 75% uh, smaller than it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as we grew and as we grew exponentially, we outgrew that lab. Um, it can only run a certain number of samples at a time and a certain number of tests on those samples. So as we started to test more, we reached the physical limits of that laboratory um, to where it would literally be running for 40 hours a week straight without a break and then possibly going into 50 hours without someone standing there watching it. Uh, the lab started to break down because we were using it too much. Um, and that's when we were able to secure the grant dollars from CJCC with a private lab, which was eLabs at the time. Uh, we were able to transition to them almost seamlessly. Uh, they pay for shipping, they pay for supplies, they pay for everything. We get a one unit price from them. And so it's very, very convenient. Um, there's always the idea that we could run a lab internally in the county based on volume, mm -hmm. uh, but right now the convenience of using them doesn't, and the pricing that they give us, I can't see the savings to the county. Okay. Any other questions or concerns from the board commissioners? Okay. One question. Yeah, I, question it, it, it was sort of related, but I, I, I just wanted to clarify. We, we do have, and it may be because you mentioned specialty, uh, we do have testing for new applicants um, um, in the county for our public safety fire and sheriff. And again, I don't understand those things, so I'm asking very general because it, it, may, be, it, may, it may be specific. But it's drug testing, drug testing. And so those who are applying for us, there's volume with that. Uh, there's testing within our ranks. Um, um, I, I don't know if our HR director is here. I know I, I was involved in the conversation. And I guess my question is, is there some type of scale? And again, you might have already looked at this, but I'm hearing, you know, judicial is judicial. Like public safety is public safety. You guys tend to be in your own worlds. We're sort of the, the general government. And so I'm, I'm just trying to see, is there opportunity to, 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 to leverage across the board? I mean, to me, testing is testing. Uh, but again, if there's something specialty or something unique, or uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Can you address that at all? I would anything? be happy to reach out to both the Director of HR and also Transportation to say that we might have testing needs that align and find out if we can partner with them to save the county even more money. Yeah. All right. That, that's just more to prompt that, but not to take you off task on what you negotiate and so forth, but it was more of a, as we hear from our, our position, we hear different pockets, and it's important to put it together, at least for the consideration. I'm good. Thanks, sir. Thank I yield. Okay. Any other? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Pruitt. Tab number nine, authorization to use FLOST equipment funds in the amount of 18 <coughs> $1,389 to purchase a zero-turn infield machine for use at Boundary Water, uh, Waters Park, as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. Director Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. 
Uh, yes, this comes by way of the uh, Recreation Oversight Committee to purchase an infill machine that we use to maintain our ball fields. And this one will be stationed down at Boundary Waters Park. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tab number 10, authorization to approve use of splashed equipment funds in the amount of $12,910 to upgrade the metastasis um, control system at Boundary Waters Aquatic Center as recommended by the Park, uh, Parks and Recreation Oversight uh, Committee. Director Dukes again. Yes, ma'am. This is, this is actually the computer that controls all the water flow. Uh, in the pools, both pools. Mm -hmm. It uh, also controls the uh, temperature of the water. The old system is 13 years old and we're beginning to uh, have a hard time finding parts mm -hmm. and it's basically, uh, basically getting obsolete. So this will go a long way uh, to keep the water temperature and the water flow in the pools constant. Is it metasis or metasis? Okay, metasis. Okay, because yes, I've been in healthcare too long. I said metastasis. We don't want it to be metastasized. Okay. No. So metasis. Okay. Any other any questions from the board of commissioners? Okay, we'll move on to tab. Thank you, Director Dukes. Yes, ma'am. Tab number eleven: authorization to approve a car allowance <coughs> change for the chief assistant district attorney and the <coughs> chairman to sign all related documents. Legal department. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair and board members, 11, uh, 11, 11 and 12 are uh, related items. Because the district attorney has been appointed a state court judge and resigned his seat, uh, the current chief assistant district attorney has been sworn in as the acting district attorney pending election or appointment by the governor. And so on 12, Ryan Leonard, as the acting district attorney, is changing car allowances <coughs> during the period in which he serves in that capacity. The one item on 12 that will be added to that contract is it will automatically terminate when he's no longer serving in that capacity, mm -hmm. either by election or by appointment or whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Item 11 is because he was the chief assistant district attorney, they now have an acting chief assistant a district attorney appointed by the acting District Attorney, <laughs> who did not have a car allowance, who now gets the former Chief Assistant District Attorney's car allowance, right. it also will have language added to it. It, it starts <laughs> April 2nd through the end of the year, but it will have automatically automatic terminating language when he no longer serves in that capacity. If the governor were to appoint, for instance, and before the election, Depending upon the time and the way the law works is, I think if it's, I want to say May 6th, but if it's six months or in, then if the appointment is made after May 6th, then that person will serve a two-year term and run in 2020 and there won't be an election this fall. If that happens, that person by appointment, once they're sworn in, will be able to appoint a chief assistant district attorney. If they choose to appoint somebody else, this will be self-effectuating. It'll go away automatically. If the appointment is made before May 6th, there still will be an election. So we're just tying it to an automatic. When you're not in this title anymore, it's over, and then we'll have to approve a new one. Mm -hmm. So 11 and 12 are related, and uh, 12 is required by law. The acting district attorney is entitled to the same compensation pay as the former district attorney, not counting uh, experience credit, I guess. <coughs> So 11 and 12 are, are all related, and we'll fix them so they automatically end if something happens different. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you. Tab number 13, authorization to amend the contract with Network Cable and Infrastructures Incorporation to include installation of a closed circuit television system, access control system, and intrusion system in the new Bleakley building that is compatible with the systems currently being installed in the courthouse for a total additional cost of $95,520.88 pending final legal review. Director Worthen, good day you are. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as you're aware, the Sheriff's Office will be uh, overseeing all of the security measures in the uh, new Bleakley building. And at their request, we had a proposal submitted from NCI, which is who's doing the courthouse updates currently. Um, they were looking to have the same system over there, so it's compatible. 
we have um, Captain West here from the Sheriff's Office who can speak on behalf of their desires to have this. And then uh, Jeff Wagner is here with NCI that can get specifics of the, the system if needed. Thank you, Captain oh. West. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we did quite a bit of research um, before we chose this company for our security system to uh, upgrade the security system here at the Corral. So we're asking for the same company to go in and place a uh, camera system, duress alarm system, and a key card access system into the new building. And this is one that we've chosen. Um, hopefully, if you have any questions about it, I'll be glad to answer. Sorry, I'm not really a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about You're that. You're doing great. Madam Chairman, this is yes. Bill Peacock, the Purchasing Director. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just want to point out that we're maintaining the same pricing, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, this was actually a, a bid process where we went out to bid for this company. Okay. Uh, and they are maintaining their pricing from that bid award uh, for the new services that they're going to be providing in the Bleakley building. So there's no additional cost um, other than what um, was um, stipulated in there, uh, the bid that they turned into us. And additionally, um, Mark Till said he was going to try to comment in there, and I'm not sure if he did, but if the board approves this, there is money in the contingency account to cover this. Okay. Any questions from the board of commissioners? Commissioner Geider. Uh, you said the contingency account is not under the John Blakely uh, No, ma'am. So fund? when when the Blakely funds started, it was not going to be under the sheriff's office provisions. Uh, so there was just a very basic camera system there, and it's grown into this as the sheriff's office has taken over. Okay. Okay. All right. You're back. You're back. Commissioner. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you call it a remark or a comment, but anyway, uh, I like to see us uh, we wean away from the language of Bl the Blakely building. It is, it is a commercial. <laughs> it is a commercial. I mean, I know it was it was a Blakely building, but at some point it's going to be a government government annex building or something like that. But if we could just come up with another working title for that, yeah. just, just to change ha change habits. Right. Yes. Well, this is a Douglas County annex building. Not, not, not officially. Okay. Yes. okay. DCA, DCA building. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other comments about Commissioner Robinson? I believe you had something popular. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> again, this this project came along during. Um, I believe we paid cash for this building, um, the government annex building. Um, um, about a million five, if I recall. Um, we didn't necessarily have a, a budget in approaching it. It was more of a strategic opportunity to buy the asset, and we worked through it. Um, it's something we had to manage and monitor. Uh, unlike the animal shelter, it was very deliberate. Um, it had a very, um, it, it, it knew what it was looking at. This has sort of evolved, and so, um, as we're getting it to, to the point, um, <coughs> how do we account for some of these expenses? Right? We know it's a necessary building, but it's like, okay, it's just sort of growing on its own. And it, it's something I've just observed. It's just sort of, you know, doing a little bit at a time, which is, which is okay. But I, I guess to this point, um, can we, can we put, get our minds around this project? I mean, for example, it's, it's what is the total cost of this build? This build out. Do you know? Well, so the contract price was three point four, some odd million dollars, three point four one four, I believe. Uh, that did not include the architectural fees, which were four and a half percent. It ends up being of around one hundred and seventy thousand, I believe. Um, in addition to that, also not included in the contract price would be uh, phones, computers, furniture, moving. There's another, uh, and I don't have that in front of me, I apologize, but I think that was around $200,000 worth of incidentals, if you will. Okay. Um, the original quotes we were working on, on the back building and the side building, were around a million dollars to do everything, including all of the uh, equipment furnishings, the lifts. There's a, a large number of lifts in there. Um, so all together it was, um, four, 
around 4.6 million, I think. I got 4.5 is what you said, okay? All right, yeah. And that's off the top of my head, sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Uh -huh. So 4.5 million, um, again, um, not inclusive of the things we're talking about today, correct? Correct. Not inclusive of the build out of this building. Correct. Um, does it include the move? Uh, yes. Is that inherent in, inside yes, the property? <coughs> All right, so, so to extend the conversation a little bit since we're doing good on time, how much uh, does the build out of this building cost? Because this is all related. Uh, you know? Uh, I'm not doing that one, so I don't. <laughs> Uh, it's okay to say I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> yes. I believe the budget has six hundred thousand dollars. That's right. <laughs> That's for the total build out of the courts and everything else that we we're going to do here. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. That six hundred thousand includes again the downstairs and, or to that point where we're just talking about, right? Yes. Sir. It does or it doesn't. It does. All right. So it's not in addition to it. It's included in this six hundred number. Yes, sir. That's the. That the six hundred thousand is for courthouse renovations, right. inclusive of security. No, I'll, I'll have to verify that. All right, so I won't belabor. Then can we get a, a total accounting? Okay. Right, both sides, both um, the new annex building as, school, as well as the courthouse. Uh, whatever the original estimates that we thought it was versus our actuals today, we just want to know what the numbers are and any other anticipated expenses that we think we've got. Um, again, we're, we're doing this by cash, and I'm fine. I, I just want to keep up with it so that we, we're, we, we can really anticipate this. So um, thank you, staff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. I, there's more just questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, general questions. Commissioner Carter. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, I think that uh, the ex excess from the jail um, uh, splash funds were set aside and assigned to the John Rickley building in the amount of quote, four point something it's million. Four point one million, uh, and that's that's the source of funding. That's where the funding came from, was from the excess from the splash, the jail splash, mm -hmm. and so and that's in the ass assigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. That's me. Yeah. Total cost. Mm -hmm. I go back. Commissioner Mitchell. <laughs> I, know, I know you're trying to run, but. So this number of 95 plus, uh, that's just cameras, computers. <clears throat> give me, I mean, and I know. It's key card access system. Okay. Arrest alarms, panic buttons. Gotcha. Camera access. Uh, camera system—it's a system. Right. It's what we need for the security of our building. Right. And, 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 and so you guys can see it on, on your end, as well as I mean, kind of monitor. We'll have a deputy in the building. Yes. Sir. Right. And, and which isn't it two deputies in the building? Am I right? Two, two that's what, I think that's what. Um, I think it's created by the board. So, so that so everybody can probably you might want to go back to the podium. Oh, yeah. and, have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. and trust me, I won't ask. I don't, I don't have the tough questions. So, but as you were saying, it, 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 one or two officers, I think it is. There was two, two deputies. Yes, that's why I called two board commissioners. So, peeling off of vice chair's questioning, um, what else, and maybe it's not to you guys, but what else do we anticipate? Do we, you know, because we, we're trying to get our arms around the big number. Totally. Yeah, or more of a total amount. Yeah. Do you anticipate anything else? I mean, <coughs> now we've got the IT side. More security news. Okay. Uh, no, sir, I do not. But, you know. Right, right. As far yeah, as it, predicted. If you want a big chair that may cost them a whole lot more in furniture than we anticipated, I guess, or something. So, yeah, I know you don't know that cost. Well, right. no, sir. Um, Mr. Baker, sir. Right, he is back there. Yes, sir, yeah. he is. So, yeah. um, I've asked Mr. Baker to uh, for our security office to um, supply us with the furnishings. Yeah. So it would be and and I'm not I'm not going to really get into the details of the furniture. I was really joking about that. But do you anticipate anything else? Because I think we've covered the cost of 
of uh, computers. And, and I think the state has updated some stuff and did some updates with software that we can kind of make that adjustment. Is, is all that in here and the numbers we're talking about? Because I think we're all trying to get our head wrapped around like that total number. Or should we look at another $100,000 that we may look at tomorrow and say, oh yeah, we forgot about, you know. I don't think there's anything else. We, we've got the new computers that the state required. We've got it. the okay. scanners. Right. We compromised on the scanners. We're not getting as many as we needed. We're yeah. gonna get by with to and from to get there. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll get by with that. I think it was 10. Yeah, we're going to get 10 instead of mm -hmm. what we needed. But okay. we'll come back at a later date and get whatever we need later on. We'll see if the 10 will work. Uh -huh. But I don't anticipate anything. I think all the furniture stuff is in, um, all the security equipment's in, right. the, the captain needs, um, and I don't, I don't foresee anything else. It's, it's been ordered. Right. The equipment's been ordered, not all of it is in. I'm just going to say yes, that. But I don't, I don't foresee anything else. James and I go over things almost weekly now, mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't see anything else. Something may come up. The only thing that I can think of that may come up is the state throwing something else at us. Right. And we don't know that yet. But they've given us a list of things that we needed. And luckily, we were, since we were in the move, we were already ordering that stuff. So I don't foresee anything else. I think James and I went over everything that, a couple things we requested, and we, we got that uh, secured. And I don't see anything else that I can think of. Yeah, and I'll add a big picture. Um, I'm not foreseeing any substantial cost changes or anything other than what's on the agenda today, which is this, and then we have fuel pumps coming up. In the yeah, that's so true. Those two items were not really part of it. Other than that, I think everything, I think we're going to be able to cover everything as planned. So with Fleek as well, I'm going to make a left turn here, though. With Fleek as well, you've got those numbers somewhere, correct, and not in this number, but or we know what, what the big numbers are. The big numbers, it's all it's all one thing. Yes. Yes. Okay, 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 it's all, okay, got you. And, and when, when do we anticipate this move in the work? Um, the contractor said they'll be finished with their last thing uh, the end of this month. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, uh, so we've got furniture, trying to get furniture set for the first week of May, um, and they'll be, a little downtime after that as far as getting computers and phones moved and set up. Um, and then we're going to start coordinating the actual move. So, um, so will they do a dry run or so? Uh, we're still working through that. Oh, okay. So you got that plan yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we will try to do a dry run to make sure that the computers are up and working. Uh, right. Before we switch everything right, because, because with, with the whole state and, and the marriage, now have you guys been working closely with IT and everybody else to, to assure that this whole transition bandwidth and, and, and everything that we, we kind of ready? Good. Okay, so. Yeah, they've been very much involved, and uh, we've established a, a direct connection from here to there, like with fiber only, mm -hmm. you no know, one else has access. It's, it's our line. Mm -hmm. um, it's in. That's set. Uh, Got it. Um, so we're we're on track. We should be good. Mm -hmm. Got it. And, and with all the um, I don't know what I would want to call it fiber challenges uh, from the city of Atlanta and other places where we got all these unique things that are happening. I'm assuming we we're addressing that <coughs> as well. Yes, okay. So yes. we won't we won't get caught off guard. I mean, there's no you know no fail proof mechanism that we can ever think of because these guys just. It's outsmarting them, and they're trying to outsmart us as we go through any of this IT stuff. Right. Yeah. Yes. By fiber, we're directly connected over to the annex building. Got it. Okay. So we we, we kind of keyed in on that because it's not a shared line. No one else has access right. to it or anything. So well, it's, nothing is ever shared. It's, yeah. just, it's when it's shared. It's when there's problems. <laughs> right. So. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, outside of that. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, Okay. Last week of May is probably, last week of May is probably the move day. Got it. And, and how comfortable are you with everything that's going on? Because I mean, you'll be the one who in the building. We'll we'll just drive by and, and say hi. So <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks good. They they're doing a really good job. We're really communicating really well. James is doing a good job. Okay. I have to hit him every once in a while. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, the deals, and IT is on it. They they've got the computers down there. Right. We got one installed that we're testing right. now. Uh -huh. uh, I think they said they're gonna bring some more up. Yes, we're imaging them right now to bring more up to it. Got it. Yeah, so probably by next week or so, yeah. we should have a few more up there. We'll test them before we move. Right. And hopefully, when we move, all of them will be tested. Right. And we'll move those over first. Mm -hmm. Well, those will be installed first, and we'll still have this system up. Mm -hmm. And then when the state switches over, hopefully. Right. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Geiger has been through this oh, transition. <laughs> I'm praying. Hopefully. I'm praying for you. It'll work well. The conversion's and, awful. And, and the only yes. other thing I, I'll, I'll add, uh, mm -hmm. you and I have had this conversation about parking. And I noticed all the islands in it, and that's probably what I'm done with you guys if you guys want to, you know, you can run now. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it is the parking. Uh, I know he put all these little islands, and I've been up there on many of the pages. Um, parking, it, it's, is that going to be it, enough parking, or is that with those islands? It, I don't know, it just seems like, yeah, okay, okay, me too. I, I just James and I have addressed this. I don't think there's enough parking when you consider there's let's say 50 employees from the assessor's office and my office. Right. You almost got 50 people parking. And when they put those islands in, I go, oh man, <laughs> they really reduced it. We've talked about employees parking behind the fence, um, along the fence line. Okay. So that will probably be one of the options that we use, that the employees will park in the back because we know at certain times we get really busy, especially during property tax season and all yes. that. Right. I don't see a hundred spaces there. We they keep saying we got a hundred spaces, but I think it, well, 50 we got fifty people with, yeah. outside. Right. So we're gonna I probably have to park behind the fence. Right. So the parking and the islands and all those are all done to county standards. What we do on all the other developments. So the the, the parking spaces meets the county minimums. Um, there's actually a minimum amount of maximum. It falls in that range. Um, there's around 90 some odd spaces. Um, there is the option to park in the backside uh, along the fence on the on the fleet side. It'll be divided as far as the public goes, uh, but we'll have if this is approved, we'll have key card access on the back side of the building, so employees could come in and out of the back building with a, with a key access. Um, if they need that. So as of right now, if you take out all the employees, there's in the, probably in the range of 40 to 50 um, visitor parking spaces. Um, appraisal generally doesn't have many visitors at a time. It's, it's a few of a day or something like that. So the bulk of it will be tax and tag. Mm -hmm. We've discussed it. I think certain times of the month and years, it'll be better than others sometimes. Uh, but that's that's going to be their call. If they want to park in the back and free up, we, we can certainly accommodate. So we we're, we're looking at that as a plan of action in the event parking starts well, getting... One huge benefit versus here. Uh, here, if we're out of spaces, we're just kind of out of spaces. There, if they're out of spaces, they can move to the back. There's plenty of space back there if we, if we need. So would they have access out the chute or... Only when when that when needed, I guess. I, kind of what it's that, it's fine with me either way. We can do either one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we can move into it and play it by ear and see if it looks like it's an issue. Shift them back, or if they want to start that way, we can do that also. Yeah, because we want to make sure our, our customers, which is mm -hmm. uh, you know our um, citizens, have uh, plenty of good partners to this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So, and, and who decided to put the islands in there? Uh, that was part of the architectural design. Um, they did it, but as I said, the islands, that's actually part of the county code. We do. But I understand that. I understand. But, so, but just needing the parking, though, would have, to me, I mean, we could, that was the whole purpose. No, I'm sorry. Say that again now, I'm sorry. I was asking if WSA had been involved in, in had requirements, but it's not. It's, it's our own it's county 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 county. Because of minor or something, I think you, you yeah. may be alluding to. Maybe that's, oh, no, not WSA. It doesn't do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but okay, I, I would highly suggest that we kind of address that on the front end sure. versus on the back end. I mean, just would make it, if I were you guys, I'll make it 
a part of where they park and where the citizens park. Period. So, but that's you know, Mr. Tax Commissioner, I can't uh, you know you'll take the lead on that one. I yield back. Okay. Commissioner Gaynor. Just one question, are you gonna move the drop box from down here over there? Yes. Good. We're gonna move the drop box. We're working <laughs> on a location now. Uh, uh, over there. Got plenty of islands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're waiting to see when they're finished with their front design, uh, where we can put that box. Now you're gonna leave the kiosk here in the courthouse. Um, we're, <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah. It would be nice. If you have room, I don't. I don't know your design yet. Okay. We've talked about leaving it here so people, when they come here, they can do it here or there. Uh, but I don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to design. Well, my goal is to leave it here so that they can uh -huh. access it here also. But I don't know how your design is going to look up front yet. And we've made provisions in the new building. If we need to have one in the lobby there, we'll have power and data available. Yeah. Well, you actually have one in the Kroger down here, yeah. <coughs> so it may not be necessary to right. have it in the building, too. So. Yeah. But I just wondered about the drop box, because I know a lot of people use that, especially mm -hmm. during tax season. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We will, be, as soon as they're done with their special design, okay. we, will, <laughs> we will try to move it down, we'll get it moved down there. That was one of the things of priority on our list, so. Hopefully it'll be moved when we do. We'll have a new box that everybody can see. Okay, thank you. Okay. Would it, um, Mr. Baker, Tax Commissioner, would it behoove us to have two drop boxes, maybe leave that one there and then put a new one there because you got creep, uh, sometimes we are, we have habits and they may come here and then get confused for a while. Could you just have two? Yeah, we can leave it here for Yeah, a just while. for a while. And then that's we'll what put a sign. And then you all we can leave it here and have a pick up here and there also. If, if, it's convenient, if it's convenient for the citizens, we could we could do that. Okay. But otherwise, we'll just put a note on it that we moved and well, this it's going to cease at a certain time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner just uh, uh, two comments. Uh, actually, quite a while back, uh, in uh, Commissioner Baker, I'm finished with you. I just this is just a comment for general uh, okay. edification. Uh, I noticed uh, quite a while back we put up a very, very nice, uh, I call it a privacy screen or a, a obscuring screen on, on the backside doors uh, from the uh, condos and people live on, that, on the backside of the property. So that's going to look real nice when those, uh, when those trees go together. And a good, good selection of trees. It's uh, two, two varieties. So that looks real good. Another thing, uh, during this conversation, we referenced to uh, changes here at the courthouse. And, uh, and uh, may not be understood by people that are going to watch this on film and people here in, in the uh, in the work session. Uh, but the courthouse will be undergoing a, a security upgrade, uh, which will mean the security will be encompassing of the entire courthouse building, not just not just the court side. So there's going to be some movement of, of security access, and uh, I'm sure some walls here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that type of thing. So we're not rebuilding the the, uh, the, new, the courthouse. It's fairly new. But what we're doing is uh, t taking advantage of the fact that we're moving quite a few staff out, and also primarily upgrading the security so that the entire uh, courthouse is under uh, security regimen, as opposed to just the uh, uh, court side. So I yield back. Okay. Any other comments from board commissioners? Just had one com uh, comment in terms of uh, compatibility. It just says the system would be compatible with the new system being installed in the courthouse. And it may be a, a question for our ISMT department. The monitors will, uh, the monitors maybe from the bleak, well, from the new field and DCA building, will they be able to see what's going on here, vice versa? You know, those monitors, can you see in both places? Or can you explain that, please? Yes. Yeah. I've asked them for a standalone system at, at the new building mm -hmm. uh, for reasons of security. Okay. And um, people gaining access or not gaining access to it. So that system over there, I've asked for a standalone system. A standalone. And this system here will be a standalone system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you for answering the question. All right. We're going to move on to tab. Just the one more question. Okay. You have one question. <laughs> 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 she lost it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I do love you. <laughs> tab number 14. Authorization to award a contract to Atlanta. Uh, Petroleum Equipment Company Incorporation for the construction of a new fueling system for fleet operations for a total cost of $335,820.50 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Back in January of this year, we, we uh, uh, distributed an RFP for the new fueling, fueling station. Uh, the due date for those RFPs was February the 9th. We received five back with prices ranging from 315000 all the way up to $492,000. Uh, we um, uh, reviewed with Fleet uh, and uh, other members of the county staff the proposals. We actually did a site visit out at Atlanta Petroleum Equipment to see the operation of their fueling system, the, the, uh, pro the product that they were offering to provide to us. Uh, we did make a couple of upgrades to what we had originally spec'd out in the original RFP, uh, and that increased the price uh, of the fueling system to 335,000, which is still lower than any of the other um, submittals that were made. So what we're asking is that the board uh, allow us to award the contract to Atlanta Petroleum Equipment for the $335,000, and these dollars are actually will actually come from the general fund from 190 to pay for the fueling station. Any questions from the board commissioner? Okay. Um, okay. Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it will come to where? What, what, say that again. General fund 190. It's just coming out of contingency. It will come out of contingency, um, but uh, Commissioner Mark had included an estimated $400,000 he knew in the budget process this would be coming down the line. So there are $400,000 that sort of earmarked for this particular project. Out of contingency. We didn't just budget in development services or to me or uh, it's okay, let's just say so now this four hundred thousand is for the new government assets, the fleet building in the back. It, is that where it's going? It's, yes, it's the fueling station for all county employees other than the sheriff's department. Uh, we'll be using this fueling station for all the county vehicles that we service and maintain and need to fuel. Right, so Chicago <coughs> Avenue, Chicago, is it where we're moving it from Chicago Avenue? Chicago, yes, yes. To the new Douglas County yeah. Annex. Yeah, right. the annex. All right, all right. So that's fine. All right, so we got to do an annex. We've taken the. So the old pumps go where? Do we dis? Do we what do they call it? decommission? Do we uh, put I'm sand ask in Mr. there? Gary Jenkins to come up to the podium. And yeah. The answer is yes, but he, he may be able to shed more light. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Gary Jenkins. The answer is yes. We, we would love to get those old tanks, dispensers, mm -hmm. the canopy away from Chicago Avenue, decommission, okay. go through EPD to do that. The uh, Hopefully, if the uh, sale of the old jail goes through with the city of Douglasville, we can do the same over there because we still got some right. uh, regulated pumps, dispensers there. Okay. And just get completely out of the business with fuel except for, for Douglas County Annex. Yes. Yes. Annex. <laughs> right. And uh, so we, we do have <coughs> four 500 gallon skid tank fire stations because they're so remotely located, it's hard for them to come up, get filled, and go back because they're, they're out when they get there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have four portable tanks and what ends up at the uh, courthouse annex. Okay. So. And so these, these pumps, again, they, they take care of all the needs. Uh, one more time, so this 400000 is this also included? Was this included in this total budget that we're trying to get to? So again, all things in. I know we put a lot of things in this new government annex, not only the task commissioners, assessors, uh, fleet, all, these, all of this total cost. Can we ensure we get that total cost and if this was included? It was not included in the initial budget, but it was included in the 2019 budget. Sure. So it keeps growing. Yeah. So, all right, to my point. So I'm not concerned about the, the cash flow today to pay for it. I'm more at, my question still goes back to my previous question, which is total cost, all in, can we get 
been accounted for. That, mm -hmm. That's yes. really. And so I'd like to mention on the, this was not included originally. Actually, it kind of was to begin with, and then it went away because we were looking at doing fuel cards. And if y'all remember the little fuel scare we've had a couple times through the years, mm -hmm. they decided that was not mm -hmm. a prudent option and we would go back to having our own on site. So mm -hmm. we, that's why it came back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Director Jenkins, I have a question for you. If you could come back to the uh, podium, <coughs> please. Yes, ma'am. I was under the impression that the pumps, the ones that are on Chicago Avenue, would be utilized as back backups in the case of emergency. These others went down. I, I'm not aware of that. Oh, no. okay. But I can so promise you this much. Do you think it's prudent to decommission those pumps? What happens in the event? These new ones, I know they're digital, they go down. What right. What is our recourse? Well, are you back that, up mm -hmm. that equipment on Chicago Avenue is just it's, about it's done. done. <laughs> it's over 25 years old. You know, so it's those are ones steel, that steel tanks, single lined. Uh, it's just about beyond they use. Okay. Uh, the Sheriff's Department will always take care of buying an EMS, uh, 911. Okay. And then we, we have two, five, that, 1,000 gallon tanks in Chicago now, just in case it goes down. Okay. We were within about a day and a half of not having fuel okay. at one point in time. So I would recommend getting them out, decommission them. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then if we had to, we could use those gas carts or something. That's correct. Early. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. And the decommission <laughs> side of this, isn't there a cost to this? I mean, there will be. Yes, sir. Have we? Because I think we all try to get our hair wrapped around the, the total costs of what we're dealing with. I know we got one. Is that what I No, oh, I'm oh, just oh. mumbling to myself. Um, I know we're looking at about 400000 here, but how much does it roughly cost to be commissioned from the old jail? And, right. But but that's really wrapped up in, is, isn't that wrapped up in the city's cost on that one? I'm not mistaken, but we'll go back to it. That's a whole other conversation. But even with it on Chicago. Is there what's normally a cost on, on something of that caliber or is it destined? We can decommission them and not demolish them. Uh, you just keep them there. But that means that somebody has to go there three or four times a week and monitor the fuel. Is it leaking? Uh, it. Is there something? How much are we actually uh, dispensing? So, so what's you want to, your recommendation is decommission, get them out. Close them down, dig them out, <coughs> get rid of them the whole time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you would hope it's somewhere during the process of the new construction uh -huh. when we begin to utilize it, that maybe we can wrap that back in with the contractor just doing the new work mm -hmm. and kind of uh, parlay our funds, if you will. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's still a few thousand bucks left. I, you know, I don't know exactly the cost right, of right, right, right. the demolition process. I know that sometimes that the stuff, as bad as it is, has a value for resale. Okay. Pumps, dispensers, right. tanks. Right. Because you just said this is a single line and, and some other stuff you, you kind of mentioned that. Yeah, I don't, mean, I, I don't think they can be approved for underground yeah. fuel storage. Yeah. Got it. So, okay, so that's something to think about. So hopefully we, we're putting a plan of action that's together right. <clears throat> and I guess bring it back to this board as to kind of what that looks like and what that really will look like I, and I, what kind of cost it would be right. and what direction we take. I can get an estimate on that. Right. What, what's the demolition cost? Right. I mean, I think you probably should. Oh, so. oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because so, so, yes, if not, all that we can do is talk about what we think it may or may not look like or should we or should. I think if I'm hearing you correctly, let's, let's get rid of it <laughs> versus even mm -hmm. thinking of anything different because of the age, especially the one in Chicago. That's correct. Yeah. We've actually had to do in the last few months, we've had to actually manually report fuel usage mm -hmm. because of the software that does that. Got goes it. down. Got and it. it hadn't been upgraded for 18 years. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. So <laughs> got, got, I've got to work cut out for us then. Yeah, so, we do. But I, with the hopes of bringing back to this board, some kind of cost that we possibly need to look at and budget. Sure. And like you said, parlay out a dollar with this with these guys here who might be uh, might be the perfect you know 
marriage could we make it work yes sir you know and, and save a few dollars and making this happen but um, but some we need to, I would like to see some kind of plan of action on what it will look like if we decide to take this rule plan a B or C or something sure okay All right. thank you All right. I yield back okay any other questions or comments? Okay. All right, next we have tab number 15, approval of quarterly report for the disposal of surplus furniture and office equipment. Director Peacock? Yes, ma'am. Uh, by county ordinance, uh, we're required to um, keep a list of all the surplus uh, furniture and office equipment uh, and to uh, dispose of it in a competitive manner. Um, we have, uh, over the last six months, accumulated quite a bit of, of it, it's, it's not usable, it's junk stuff over at the, um, um, at the old jail site. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, just have the board recognize that that's there and that we'll be disposing of it in an appropriate manner. Okay. Any comments uh, from board officials? Thank you. Next, um, tab 16, we'll have board appointments. It'll be the Hospital Authority Board and Keith Douglas Beautiful Committee, uh, and that will be discussed in executive session. Are there any other comments or questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a commissioner comment. Yes. Response. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to separate myself from my, my peers for a minute to, to respond um, appropriately. Uh, regarding the Transportation Committee. This is not with me and my um, fellow commissioner of oil care. This is Kelly Robbins alone. We're, we're careful in that we, we respect First Amendment. First Amendment goes both ways. It's important. <coughs> um, responsibly, you know, as citizens, um, we, we should all care about our neighbors. Right? We, we should care that they should have the opportunity to speak <coughs> privately or publicly with their officials, not be judged not be prejudged, not be invalidated about their speech, when they do it, how they do it. They don't need interpretation before they're their neighbors. <coughs> um, the suggestion that residents north of the railroad tracks voices any less than south is erroneous. It is erroneous to believe that it was a farce that was staged. They're educated, they're intelligent, and they spoke on their own. They requested the presence of me at a meeting on a Sunday, and by that Monday I said, yeah, we'll accommodate you. Don't do that. I get political gamesmanship, but don't do that with other citizens, not with your neighbors. You can do better. Do better, right? That's the only thing you'll see me always advocate. I can take all the other stuff, I'm built for that. It's like yawn. <clears throat> but as it relates to when you move in on other citizens, to suggest that their voice is not valid, as if it was a I'm going to go there and grab that microphone and says, okay, I'm going to dominate every microphone. No. It's their turn to speak. They get to vocalize however they want to vocalize without pressure. They're free. So when, when, I, when I hear these commentaries, it's like, hold on, back up now. Do better than that. Nobody is being trickery. That's important. We had a meeting. We did, we had, if you think about the Transportation Committee, it has a standard, held to a standard beyond other committees. Who else publishes their agenda? Who else films their meetings? You're right, they're recommending bodies, but they are important. As you saw here today, technology, parks and rec, uh, they are important. But it's important that we don't, look, all we're trying to do is accommodate what the citizens want. That's all the commissions are. Just give them a platform to speak. But when I hear all this, it's like, okay now, it, it, it's important that there has to be some pushback to say, okay, there's a boundary, there's a line. Madam Chair is very clear when she says, come on, guys, stop politicking. I mean, you, just stop politicking. I mean, if you come down here every month, every week for 12 straight months, and the day that you didn't show up, something happens, and you say, we're tricking you, well, what? That's like being down at the Capitol, you see those lobbyists, they're down there for everything. They monitor everything. So if you're going to be a watchdog, be a watchdog. But don't say that because we keep moving, we're trickery. Don't do that. Those are false facts. Don't make noise to sort of build your point. You can do better if you want to compete, but don't do that. I just, you must respect your citizen and their neighbors and their comments, whether it's just one, two, three, or four. 
That's all I ask when we come in here and I, let, I listen to these comments. Again, I can take all the direct hits. That's what we're built for. But when it comes to other citizens, that I cannot accept, and I must address it. I yield back the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, That's it. Any other questions or uh, concerns or any final comments from board commissioners? Okay, that being said, we will, uh, Attorney Bernard, at this time, do we need to go into executive session? You, you need to uh, executive session for both personnel and for uh, legal okay. matters. All right. Do we have a motion on board commissioners to go into executive session? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Take a 10 minute break. At this time, we will reconvene this work, uh, work session. Is there any other further business to discuss with the Board of Commissioners? Ben, can can I just Adam? ask a question, because yes. I don't know what the procedure is here. Uh, when committees make a recommendation, where does it go from there? Uh, like the Technology Committee made two very important recommendations. Um, and they were signed off by the membership and everything. But, and I kind of thought it'd be on the agenda this morning, but mm -hmm. it's not. Uh, where does it go from, from the regular? Where does it go from Lisa? It's normally the responsibility of the department head, or either Mark would give me the right. mm -hmm. information to put it on the agenda. On so the agenda. But, but I, I think, though, because Russell's out, he's out, so uh, that's probably why I didn't. Oh, we see you out. He's out this week. He'll be back next week. Okay. Well, the next meeting, rather than not. Yeah, sorry. maybe he's going to need to wait till next meeting. Yeah, so he won't be there. I'm just guessing at that now that you say that. I think that's the last conversation you and I had. Not about this, though, about some other stuff. And also, there was uh, some recommendations from the uh, fire and EMS, and um, yep. they were submitted to whoever, I guess, to you. <laughs> You're the department head, got to kind of. Yeah, because the department has responsibility to, yeah, to ask me to, to put it on the agenda. Right. And we'll follow because up on it. Important. Yeah, okay. I don't know where it went. You know, after I signed it, I don't know where it went. So. Well, they give me copies right. of the recommendation, right. but... I know it, but I, I'm not... Uh, the department head is... Right, those things the department head normally would bring it through it. Because and, and mm -hmm. you guys have made the recommendations. Mm -hmm. they, they may give me copies right. of the signed right. recommendation, but... That doesn't mean that I know to put it on that agenda. Mm -hmm. They would have to come back and yeah. Yeah. that department head puts their own agenda items on the agenda. Okay, my bad. Okay, we well, just need to firm that up. Then. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, sounds like left hand, right hand. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. I thought thought he could do it <laughs> or she. To, 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 to that point, to, to piggyback, and I, I think I think if, if not now at the later time, it says. You know, what is the formal rule or process for, for recommendations, and I'm talking committee only, uh, up to the administration, as well as um, from earlier conversation regarding, uh, I guess, uh, Madam Clerk, how well do we conform with meeting minutes, um, notice of meetings, uh, agenda, I mean, from a committee perspective? Are we in conformance? we need to do more? I think we can improve in the agendas themselves. And um, I have sent an email recently to all the committees reminding them that I need agendas prior to the meeting so that we can post those. But everything else, everyone has been adhering to. How fast or within what time period are agendas to be published? What are you looking for versus what's the letter of the law or whatever rule that you require to serve? I think the law only requires 24 hours. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, but I was asking them to send them in at least two days prior. For your process. That's mm -hmm. fine. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So that means for every committee, just for the, the two of them, that we will, all of them have to have agendas for the next mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. We will submit, and that agenda will be published, <coughs> whatever website. published means. Mm -hmm. Uh, notifying the public. Uh, is, is the website considered our bulletin board of old, in other words, or does it also require a step to the press? What's the difference? I do both. Okay. Uh, we are required to notify the press of any meetings, which they do get the annual schedule of all of the committees as right. well as the board meetings right. and work sessions. Um, so those are but sent the to them. Are <coughs> published, right. are they? Are they? <laughs> no, those need to be sent to the press as well. Okay. Right. So, 
it, it, it came out. I don't think everybody knows that. That's not what it means. No, no way. I don't think everybody knows that they, that they have to submit the agenda uh, two days before. I sent an email out the other day with my other one. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody pretty much has been adhering to that now. On the agenda? Uh, no. You on the agenda, but I'll, that's why I sent the email. Okay. 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 This is a yeah. mm -hmm. and I guess there's two parts to it. Do you, again, it, it, to the point, it is a sub, um, a, a, a subordinate function of the, the general board of commissioners, the general mm -hmm. assembly. And so, again, sure, I mean, we can pr produce it. Um, I, I guess my next question then is as it relates to the agendas before the meeting, obviously we get it, uh, meeting minutes, and I'm thinking about meeting minutes from the committee versus meeting minutes for board of commissioners, two separate functions. A committee is just sort of a, 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 a sub-assembly in essence, right? That's, um, that may take up specific items uh, from time to time, whereas we, we, we have a more formal action. Um, how fast are we required to turn around meeting minutes? Um, is there a law? Or According to the law, you should have a summary of the minutes within 24 hours after the meeting available if requested if requested yes all right that's a summary the reason I, I think about the volume of committees I think about limited personnel and I think like right now it looks like they're like transcripts I mean it's exhaustive and it's like well, that's all I understand board commissioners I understand that the why it has to be what it is but it uh, is it is it practical is it plausible to expect um, our current staff to be able to make that threshold in 24 hours, let's assume that everybody needed something in 24 hours. Just for the sake of record, in other words, you got to get them out 24 hours. You know, if you ask, we want to get that out. How do you fulfill that without well, adding staff? Well, the summary is, is just that. It's just a summary of the actions taken. Okay. Um, it's not the verbatim minutes. It's not even going into detail for each item. It could be specifically just the agenda with the action taken and the attendees. Okay. So only if we make a recommendation to do something, and does it have to say if it was take passed? A vote. If you take a vote, three, four, four, nine, unanimous, whatever, how we each committee does it, right? Okay. All right. All right. Yes. Talking about the two methods of conveyance, uh, you know, we talked website and newspaper. Before I was commissioner, I, re I requested uh, the commission agenda and the uh, planning and zoning agenda. Do, you, do we still do that to private citizens on request? We just don't. as a group just, mailing. <clears throat> we don't, and that's because now it's available on our website. Mm -hmm. Anyone can go to our website and pull down the the whole entire packet of each meeting prior to the mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's fine. So it's available that way. So yeah. I don't do a distribution list okay. only to department heads. Okay. And you guys. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? With that being said, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Good stuff.